Hello once again, this is Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and I did a foolish thing the other day. I bought yet another South Bend 7 inch shaper. I haven't picked it up yet today, and that's exactly what I'm going to do today. And I'm leaving presently for Bushnell, Illinois. That's about 120 miles. I'm taking my trailer and I'm going to a high school there where a shaper has been in storage for oh 10 20 years i'm not sure how long just a long time they decided to finally get rid of a few things in a bus barn or in a storage barn and uh, i was the lucky bidder in fact i was the only bidder on that it was a, a private uh, uh bid that that it, that is it wasn't a public auction it was just uh, put in a bid and i was the only bidder and uh, which means I paid too, way too much, but nevertheless, uh, it was probably f a fair price. Sight unseen. So join me now as I take that trip, and I won't show all of it, and meet up with my buddy Keith and uh, rendezvous there and, and pay for the machine. A check made out to the high school there and uh, load the machine and have lunch with my buddy and head on back home and then we'll unload it and, and talk some more about it. This might be a two-part video, I'm not sure yet. So let's get started. It's real early in the morning and I've got a long ways to go. This shaper was given to me by Ron Cox. Remember when I picked it up in Mishawaka, Indiana? I'll put a link in the description so you can watch that if you haven't already. But this is an older model, that is, it's sometime older than the mid-50s, probably early 50s. And the one that I'm going to pick up is a slightly newer model, sometime probably in the later 50s or maybe even 60s. And it, the difference is the, the base has a different shape, which you'll see in a video where I compare the two. And it has the automatic oil oiling system. There's a built-in oil pump that circulates oils onto the to the ways and other crucial parts so you don't need to oil it every day so that's the main differences between the two from a distant they probably look the same all right let's load up and get going okay it's a bright and early morning about seven o'clock and I'm headed toward Bushnell to pick up the little shaper the sun is bright the corn is high, it'll be a fun day. I'm in East Peoria. There's the casino, there's a boat there. I don't know if you can see it, but that's Peoria across the Illinois River. Well, it's two and a half hours later, and I'm just pulling into Bushnell. Every one of these little towns has a Dollar General. So now I have to find, it's been five years since I've been here. I have to find the power plant. I had to see if the old Rialto is still standing, and it is. And it reminds me of the great movie, The Last Picture Show. I think Sam Peckinpah was the director and Ben Johnson is in it. But there it is, the Rialto. And here's the Vaughn and Bushnell Hammer Factory. Remember when I visited that? And you can hear the drop forgers. There's all the steel rod that will be made into hammers and pry bars. And we're arriving at the power plant. You can see the substation here. 
where I will pick up Craig and then we will go to the high school. There it is. All right, we've arrived at the school. And there's the bus barn. Probably in that garage door. To stop right here. Should I just back in there? And I'll just stop right up here. Well, here it is. It's in there too. Good. Just two? Yeah, throw that in there. Now, what are you going to want to strap? A bit of overkill. Another overkill will kill us. I'm going to race up just a little bit. I can always lower my load line down. Yeah. Take the Craig's way just a little. Perfect. Yeah. You want both sides on first or you want to stop it? That's enough. How do you want, Craig? Both out, both front out. Hell. We can slide. If you set it there, we can slide it. I'm in as far as I can go right now. Just set it down. We can set, set it down, we'll slide it. Oh, that's perfect. Just like downtown. Downtown Bushnell. And here I am pulling out of the power plant. It's about 110 miles home. Very little, if any, traffic. Well, it's the next morning, and I'd like to get the trailer unloaded. I'm all alone. I have no help. So I think I can drag this thing off the trailer onto some ramps, so you can watch me struggle with that. Later on, I probably could find some help, but I do need to get the garage cleared, because tomorrow, Jason is coming to pick up those three hit-and-miss engines to haul them out to New York to Jimmy DeResta. So i got a lot of things happening here. So let me get this thing unstrapped and uh, 
see how I'm going to do it. Maybe it isn't possible. Well, I've got my eight foot wooden loading ramps hooked up to the trailer, hooked securely right there. And I'm gonna see what will happen here if I try to drag this thing off. It's downhill all the way, so even at my age, it may be possible. That was a bit of overkill yesterday with the lion truck, wasn't it? I wonder if Commonwealth Edison would have helped me out like that. Well, there it is, safely on the ground. That wasn't bad at all. Well, the cabinet only weighs 90 pounds, but I struggled more with that than I did with the shaper. Well, everything is filthy dirty. It appeared that this was a general shop where they did woodworking as well because there's a lot of sawdust on this motor assembly. As you can see, the cabinet really needs a lot more work and cosmetics and paint than what does the shaper. But the first thing I'd like to do is uh, paint at least the top so that I could mount the shaper but there are chips on there and uh, so on. So what I'm gonna do, I believe, yet today is to scrape this real clean, wipe it down, degrease it, and then have my uh, grandson Jordan and his dad come over and have me put this up onto the cabinet so that I can at least uh, talk about it in the next video. And as you might have guessed, this will be a multi-part video. This is the way that I intended to rig it. And that's what we did over in Indiana with four men. It can be moved quite easily. So in a little while, hopefully I'll have some help and we'll lift it up onto the stand. Well, I got a couple of my mean neighbors here that are going to help me. They claim they can lift it all alone. There's, there's Jordan and the other one, of course, is his dad. Jordan's pretty husky. He's almost as strong as me. So we got this thing all rigged up. Let's see what you can do, guys. That was almost too easy. Thank you, men. And I'll take those off, and I'll be doing another video on this. So probably have to move it up a little bit. In, in a day or two, but it can to, be want slid to, around. Want us to move it up a little bit for you? Yes. Well, my son-in-law who was standing there works for RP Lumber, and I said, couldn't you bring the boom truck over, you know, where you uh, put shingles on the roof? Uh, <laughs> but they, they are strong uh, young men, and uh, it took, how long? Ten seconds to get it in position. Well, that concludes this video. Picking it up, getting it home safely, and getting it in position. Hope you enjoyed the video. And in the next one, uh, I will proceed to 
uh, go over this, see what's wrong, what needs to be repaired, talk about cleaning it up. So this is a multi-part video. I'll put the link below in the description on uh, when I picked up the other one in the background. You might want to see that. And that was a little overkill because we had such a big trailer and a truck instead of a Toyota with a little utility trailer. So you see there's all different kinds of ways of doing this. And it, it was fun and you know what, finding a machine and, and retrieving it uh, is probably more fun <laughs> than owning it. Alright, see you next time. This is Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. Watch for a few still videos to follow. You may remember when I bought this toolbox and it included this set of Starrett pin vices. Well, when I met up with Craig, he asked me if I would trade that set of pin vices for uh, an unusual sheet metal micrometer. So let's take a look at that. I think it was a good trade. Although Craig is not a machinist, he has quite a collection of Starrett tools, many of them in perfect condition, in boxes. And uh, these are them in his office. So here's what we traded. A Starrett micrometer of that number. I think it might be lightly used. Deep throat used for measuring sheet metal. Carbide faces rather unusual. I've never actually seen one in the flesh before, so I was glad to make the trade. Well, when I was in the bus barn, they also had this uh, 12 or 14 inch Delta radial arm saw for sale, and there were no bidders. I told my friend Terry about it, and he was interested. He may call down there and buy it. If so, I'll do a little video on that, but it looked like a pretty good machine, but it is 220 volt. No takers.